these are the three most important flows that every single Shopify brand out there should have within Klaviyo. And I'm going to show you exactly what they are, how to build them out, and the types of content you should populate each of them with. If you're curious, I run an email marketing agency. I do this for a living for a ton of brands. So if you're a brand doing over a million a year or more, feel free to book in a call. We can definitely help you. And if you're a freelancer or below that rate, then I actually just have a course teaching you everything that we do. So, you know, see which one fits the best. Let's dive into it. This is a brand that I want to demo real quick. Uh, it's a brand that I have some equity in, so I can definitely share this. All right, so the three emails that I kind of want to go over with you guys is the welcome series, the amended checkout, and then lastly, the customer thank you. So welcome series and abandoned checkout, those are going to be the highest revenue generating flows for literally any brand out there. I, I've never really seen an account that has any other flows supersede the revenue that these two are able to generate. And the reason why customer thank you is super important is not necessarily because it's going to make you a ton of money, but it's just really good from a branding perspective, but also customer thank you is one of those flows that's so underrated because it's so important in someone's post-purchase experience with the brand. Just think about it as this, right? Like someone placing an order with you on the website, it's going to be at least kind of two to five days before they actually receive the product. Meaning they're going to have two to five days to number one, forget about the brand. Number two, have buyer's remorse, all of this crap, right? So the customer thank you series, think about it like a kind of post-purchase free unboxing experience. I don't know if that's the right term for it, but basically the reason why customer thank you is important is because it's going to be a person's first impression of the brand before they actually get the package, right? So having this flow set expectations around uh, shipping times, set expectations around how to use the product if you have some sort of utility type of product, whether it be a supplement or something actually like practical or a piece of technology or, you know, even clothing, like for example, how things could be cared for, you know, what temperature to wash the clothing at, etc., etc. right? So think about the customer thank you as someone's first impression of the brand after they purchase, which is why it's so important because it's going to let you handle a lot of the post-purchase objection. All right, so let's get into the demos of how to actually build these flows. So the first flow I want to demo is the welcome series. This is probably the most important one since it's directly linked to email capture, which is list growth, super, super important. But also, generally speaking, welcome series does more revenue uh, compared to a balance checkout. So let's dive in. In order to build this one, all you got to do is go into flows, right? And then you want to hit create a flow and then you want to hit create from scratch. This is a super, super linear flow, which is why I don't really like to use the uh, standard welcome series because they split it off by customer versus non-customer, which I honestly have no idea why they do that. So I'm going to show you how to set it up correctly. So first of all, you're going to want to uh, choose the trigger of subscribe to list and then you're going to want to pick a list. Now, when you go to pick a list, it's super important that you pick the list that the pop-up is connected to, right? Because this welcome series is designed to be sent to people who sign up via pop-ups, welcoming them into the brand, giving them the offer, etc., etc. right? To check this, you want to go into your pop-up forms, right? Which is going to be here. And you want to click into whichever uh, pop-up form is live. You can see this one is live right now. So we go into it and go into edit form. If you click the sign up button, you're going to see that list to submit to is newsletter, right? So this means we should be connecting it to the list newsletter. So on here, you want to pick newsletter, boom, you hit select. And then in terms of flow filters, make sure you have something which is which says what someone has done or not done, placed order zero times since starting this flow. Super, super important because what happens is people who are receiving this flow should not have placed an order because once they do, they should then be sent into the post-purchase series, which is AKA your customer thank you, right? So you don't want messages to clash, it just looks really weird. So once this is done and the list is selected, just need to select the list real quick, done. You're gonna add the email. So by default, it's gonna look like uh, nothing here is gonna be here. So what you wanna do is you wanna drag a new email in here, like so, and I'm just gonna delete this. And you're gonna build it out in a similar structure like this. The welcome series should have between three to five emails Anything longer, generally speaking, you're going to see a lot of diminishing returns. And also, if you're sending campaigns on a regular cadence, then what's going to happen is, you know, you're, you're just going to send the welcome series along with your campaigns, which doesn't really make sense anymore because you're not really welcoming them into anything. You're just sending more campaigns pretty much, right? Here's how you do it. Generally speaking, if you're doing this as a brand yourself, I would highly recommend just having three emails. Keep it really simple. Um, you can follow the kind of content suggestions I have laid out in my templates right here. For example, in the welcome one, you know, introduce the brand, uh, focus on the offer, which obviously when someone signs up, it's either going to be some sort of discount variation, free shipping, or some sort of giveaway. Make sure to encompass the offer into the actual email itself. 
If it's a giveaway, just be like, hey, you're entered. In the meantime, you should check out these products. If it's a discount, make sure to have the code in the banner image, nice and high in the email so that it's very easily visible with a CTA right underneath it so that people can go on the website very easily. Or you can talk about some, you know, unique selling points of your products, benefits, etc., etc. And uh, the one thing you got to make sure is off is you, you want to turn smart sending off of this, okay? Smart sending is just like not super necessary. If you want UTM tracking, you can turn this on right here. But once this is done, obviously configure the content. And the one of the things I like to do with email one is just split test subject lines because this is super high leverage. If you can get, instead of let's say 40% open rate compared to 60% open rate, you're just going to like get a lot more emails, for example, into your highly engaged segments and also just overall, it's just better practice because someone signs up, you want them to open the email as much as possible so that you kind of train your audience on opening your emails and getting used to seeing your emails in their inbox. So split testing subject lines right here, super high leverage. I'd like to wait one day before sending another email, email to send day two. And then this one is all about introducing some social proof, giving some credibility to your brand. So for example, doing any sort of you know PR, featuring any PR, that you guys have done or just introducing social proof implementing some ugc you can even use this as another opportunity to talk about something that you previously haven't talked about so for example if you just solely introduce the brand and focus on the offer and neglected usps and benefits you can introduce that in here email three i like to keep it two days after the second email and this is just introducing some urgency onto the initial welcome offer if you remember right so for example you know, hey, a few days ago you signed up for 10% off, this code will expire in 24 hours, blah, 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 right? You can do some of that and then talk about brand storyline. You know, founding stories are really incredible, especially for brands that are more kind of culture driven, right? So for example, your fashion brands, your jewelry brands, your art brands, anything that is kind of more visual, that is really awesome. Another narrative you can play on is if you're in, the, let's say like the supplementation or skincare or like wellness space, you can brand your story around how, I don't know, you, you personally struggled a lot with acne. So that motivated you to create uh, a brand or like maybe one of your loved ones really struggled with this thing. And now it's kind of like the, the brand is like a love child of that. Just, you know, take a story, put a spin on it and make it make some meaning out of it. And that really works well from a selling perspective. And the last email I like to, if we have a fourth email, it's literally just like showcasing more benefits and talking about best sellers. And sometimes it depends on the brand. We might just add some more urgency and some more scarcity to the welcome offer saying stuff like, you know, oh, we extend this is this by another 24 hours just for you. You know, don't forget to collect your 10% off or whatever discount we signed up for in the beginning. So that's exactly how you set up the welcome series. And once it's all done and all of the content is in there, you just want to go ahead and update all action status and toggle it to live. And uh, you're basically good to go on that front. So let's talk about the abandoned checkout, right? So abandoned checkout is kind of a little more unique uh, in the sense that you need some sort of dynamic segments in there. So this is how the flow is generally structured, right? I don't recommend you build out this, build this out from scratch simply because when you do, you're likely to kind of screw up on the dynamic segments. So I'm going to show you exactly how to use the template and which template to use more specifically. Let's dive into it. So this is what the flow should look like. And in terms of Klaviyo library, you just want to search cart and you're going to see that you should have one by shop by themselves, but I do believe they might have recently changed this. So I believe the most relevant one they have is actually the email and SMS. Cause right now I know they're really trying to push their SMS as a product. So just select this one. You don't necessarily need to run your SMS through this at all. So, you know, don't worry too much there. So once you're here in terms of triggers, you'll see that it's placed order zero times since starting this flow and has not been in this flow in the last seven days. So this kind of can be adjusted to anywhere from five days all the way up to around 21 days, just depends on how conservative you want to be with your brand. I like to keep this between the seven to 14 day mark because I feel like that's where the typical sweet spot is. Um, by default, they have a delay of four hours, which I think is far too long. I get the best result with anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and a half. Four hours I just think is kind of like unnecessary because for example a lot of purchasing activities a lot of the time happen you know 6 p.m onwards so for example if someone abandons checkout at like 7 you don't want to send them this email at 11 you know what I mean so you want to catch them during waking hours and maximize your chances of actually having the email be seen and them in a headspace of making a purchasing decision so I like to keep this delay as short as possible but nothing shorter than 30 minutes just because you know people need to need time to like just sit on it a little bit and decide. Uh, right now, the template has is an SMS portion. 
Personally, I'm just not a huge fan of uh, the SMS portion for every single beginner brand because not everyone can utilize SMS to the maximal capacity. So I like to just remove this. So I like to delete the yes part in this case and just keep it real linear in terms of just having an email about a checkout series. If you want to create SMS one, you can definitely do that later on. And I would recommend not sending SMS or email. I would just recommend sending both, but with a slight time delay. So for example, sending like SMS 30 minutes after someone about his checkout and then sending the uh, email an hour later, for example, right? Or you can switch up the order just kind of up to your own preferences. But for now, let's just keep it linear because I'm designing this for brands kind of doing under 50K a month, pretty much. But if you're a brand doing above that, you should book in a call with me just because, you know, we can absolutely kick ass for both your emails and SMS. So let's dive into it, right? So email one, dude, just keep this super linear. Make sure it's just a kind of like a reminder bump. So if you look at the content angles I generally suggest, reminder, general brand benefits, nothing crazy, right? It's just like the most generic abandoned checkout stuff you can think of. It works. That, the, the genericness of it actually works out super well because people know exactly like um, what the email is about and it makes people very, makes it very easy for people to just click and go back to the checkout and then go from that, right? Again, I would recommend turning smart sending off for this one. And if you want to use UTM tracking, you can keep it on. But yeah, I don't recommend turning on smart sending for any of these emails for that matter, just because they're super high leverage and there should be no reason why you need to do that. The next email, you want to send it, and this is very strategic, right? You want to send it 24 hours after someone starts checkout. So what do I mean by that? You see how before this was four hours and now it changed into one? This now needs to be 23 hours because the sum of these two delays needs to total 24 hours. What is the psychology behind that? Well, the thinking is, right, if someone is active on their phone at around 6 p.m., most likely everyone has a very similar phone usage pattern, right? If you think about it, what time do you wake up every day? Well, you probably wake up around the same time, right? And what's the first thing you do? You check your phone, right? What about on a lunch break? You check your phone. What about when you first come home, right? You check your phone. So it's just like everyone has very almost fixed hours throughout the day in order to check their phone. So that's why you want to hit them 24 hours after they initially start a checkout, because most likely they're going to be on their devices again, right? So make sure to hit save, by the way, with these delays. Otherwise, they won't save, unlike the uh, when you toggle on and off the smart sending right here. In terms of how many emails to have, I like to keep this around three emails. I don't think two is generally enough. I like to add a third one to introduce some sort of discount incentive in order for people to to purchase, uh, complete that order. So in terms of content, the second one is gonna be about, you know, their, uh, their cart is gonna be expiring soon. And then third one, I like to introduce some sort of discount, whether it be the same as the welcome series or a slightly bigger discount, it just kind of depends on brand preferences and the margin. The reason why I recommend you guys use a template is because with the third email, for example, you really gotta duplicate it and then just add another delay manually. The reason why you wanna do this is because of but like a two day or something is because if you go into edit right you go into edit you go into edit email you'll see that they have this block pre-built out for you this is super important because it requires you know all of these uh i guess like api calls or something i don't know how exactly you would describe them but this is the kind of stuff that you would need to understand a little bit of code for so i, would, I don't recommend messing with any of this just keep it default keep it plain right and then the image is also auto populated so for example if i show you a preview um you can see that it auto populates someone's checkout with the items and then like the product image etc etc the part where you can modify is this anything that's not here basically here don't modify the cta button you just got to keep this checkout url copied and let's say you use uh, a lot of image blocks to design you just want to use this as the link for the image block. So what I mean by that is, for example, just to like real quick show an example, I'm, I'm not you know, doing this seriously or whatever. You'll see that it auto populates with the person, for example, Claire, she ordered a Aquarius necklace. It auto populates with the product image as well as the name, as well as quantity and uh, total cost, right? And if you click on one of these links, what's gonna happen is it's gonna take you to the checkout page for people to easily order. Now this person, I don't know if uh, has completed their order, but in case they have, then what's going to happen is it's just going to show the order confirmation page. And if someone hasn't actually completed their order, it's just going to take them to the checkout page with all of their products for them to enter their credit card details, billing information, and shipping address, right? So it's very easy for people to go about doing that. And uh, here's the link, right? So if you want to 
copy this link and if you have any like image blocks for example you just want to put that in here and if they click the image blocks it'll take them to the same url super important once this is done you want to hit save and exit right and then from here you'll see that the email is basically finished and uh, that's how you build the event and checkout flow. Now, if you want to learn email marketing from pros, I would recommend you check out my course. And if you're a brand doing a million a year or more, then you should book on a call with us because it can make you a ton of money. And uh, yeah, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.